Okay, so in this video, we'll talk about cobweb, which is a graphical solution technique that was used to solve a discrete time dynamical system just by looking at the okay. Let's say we had the discrete time system xt plus 1 is equal to f of xt. Okay, or let's say that this function looks something like You know, it's some some nonlinear. This, okay. And let's say we're given, I don't know, x naught here, right? Our initial condition, right? Given the initial condition, right? We want to find the solution to this discrete time dynamic. So we're going to do this just by looking at the graph. Okay, so we have x zero, right? X one. Right, the x value at the next time step is going to be f of x1. Okay? So if we look at our function here, right, here's f, sorry, f of x0, right, according to the update rule. So if we look at our function here, where we say, okay, well, here's x0, so let's see where x1 should be. Okay, it's going to be somewhere over here. Right, so this is going to be our x1, the next step. Okay, so then we say, okay, x1 tells us that x2 will be f of x1. Okay, so we want to plug in x1 now into this function to see where x2 is going to land. And so here's the trick with cobwebbing, is you're going to draw a diagonal line that goes straight through, right? So this line is going to be the xt plus 1 is equal to xt line. Right? This is the identity line. So what that means is then if we put x1 over to this line, right? if we go over to this line and then trace it down, there's x1 sitting right there, right? Because this line tells you where xt plus 1 and xt are the same. So if we connect our x1 over to this line and then follow it down, that tells us our x1. Okay? And so now we can plug x1 into our function, f of xt, to find x2. So we just follow this up from the bottom, right, all the way up, and here's x2, okay? And now that we have x2, right, we can find x3, right, that's f of x2. So again, we do the same thing, we're going to reflect it over this identity line, follow it down here, that gives us x2, which we then can input into this function. So to find the function value at x2, we follow this line all the way up to the function, and here it is there. Okay, so that gives us x3. X. And you can keep doing this, right? You can say, okay, this is going to be 4, x3 is here, then x4 is going to be you know, closer, and it looks like they're getting closer and closer to this point, right? Where our f of xt intersects with this identity line. Okay, so then if we, you know, want to plot what we did here in terms of our solution, we're saying, okay, I started x0 a little less than 3. At one time step later, it was here, which is a little bit more than 3. Right, and then at x2, about 4. Right. Yeah, it's a little, basically four. And then at x3, right, it's really close to, sorry, it's more than four here. It's really close to that one. And it looks like they're going to maybe four points. Kind of sitting around here. If we were to keep going, it would, it would look flat there. Right? So, um, I have another tool that does this, which is a little bit cleaner than doing it uh, by hand, but it's the same sort of idea. So, that guy. Okay, so let me switch over. Okay, so this tool uh, does the same thing. So here's my function. It's g of x here, but this is my f of x, right? So my, my dynamical system with xt plus 1 is g of x now of xt. So here it is, it's some complicated thing, and here it is in blue, right? So it's kind of going like that. And so the numbers here are a little bit different than the ones I just did before. 
So it's the same idea, right? So if I start with some x naught, let's say at 1.5, and I do this step, right? I'm going to plug in x naught into my discrete time dynamical system to find x1. Okay, so I follow it up to the function, and then I trace it over here, and I say, okay, x1 is about 2.0769 in this table here. Okay, so then if I do a cobweb step in here, right, you're tracing it out the identity line to bring it back down here so that this is now the input, x1. And now I'll take another step and I'll get my x2. I plug this x1 into the function. We follow x1 all the way up to see what the function value is of x1. Follow it over here, that tells you x2 is about 2.4. All right, if we do another cobweb step, we reflect that over here to the identity line, back down, so now it's our input. And once we plug that in, we get, you know, we plug in x2 equals 2.435, and we get that the function value there, right, our next x is going to be 2.5672. Okay? We can do another two steps, and that gives us 2.6. Keep going, we'll get 2.61, and it looks like we're kind of evening out here as we get to this intersection. Okay, so I'll reset this and we'll do it again just with the cobweb step. Okay, so we started at x equals 1.5. We go up to the axis, we reset, we're going to iterate once. That tells us that x1 is here, 2.0769. And then we cobweb, so we just move over to the, the axis. This is now our input, and now we go up to the function. Tell us what x2 is. Right here's the value there, it's 2.4. Iterate again, so we bring 2.4 over to the identity line that represents in here as our next input. And then the function value of that next input is x3 equals 2.57 we can keep iterating like that. And this is called cobwebbing because it looks like a little cobweb. Okay, and so then this would be our list of values that we could then plot against time, right? We could plot x versus, or x versus time. Okay, and if we tried a different initial condition, maybe let's try something small, let's do point one. All right, now I'm down here. Let's iterate a little bit. Let me zoom in so we can, right here, we're going to, so if I zoom in here, let's make our x our initial condition closer to this point here. Let's say it's there, iterate, we go over to the identity line, and now this time we're going down to the function. But it's the same process. We reflect over to the identity line. This is our new input. This is our next output, and so on. And so this is going to go down to this intersection. Okay. Whenever we're cobwebbing, uh, you're going to move towards one intersection or the other. And in this case here, we had three intersections. And you'll notice that if we started over here, we went to that intersection point. If we started in this little corner here, we went to this arrow. And they both went away from this one. This is a concept of stability that we'll get into later, which is that some of these states, these equilibrium states, are stable and attracting, and so your solutions are going to head towards one or the other, and they're going to head away from these unstable states. But we'll get into more of that later. Okay, let me reset my diagram, and now we're going to use this uh, discrete time system that we had for, um, this was for our tree growth. So remember our tree growth example. Um, let me switch one note. So in this case, you remember our tree graph, right? Our dynamical system was h of t plus one is h t plus one, right? Height of your tree this year plus one meter gives you the height next. Year. Okay switch over cool. right so let me plot this so I'm gonna have x plus one as my function and now here is this uh, update rule here and here's the identity line so in this case wherever we start right we're gonna cobweb 
and we're just going to keep increasing, right? So we cobweb here, that gives us the next year's value, right? 1.3, if we start at 0.3, and then we update that, we reflect over here, and then update, that gives us 2.3, reflect, update, that gives us 3.3, right? We could keep doing this, and you'll notice that these lines are parallel, right? They never intersect. So if we keep iterating, we're just going to keep growing and growing and growing and growing and growing, right? No matter what, these are always going to increase by one meter each year because that's our update. So it's never going to go to some sort of equilibrium. Okay, let's do a different function. So this one is our medication function, okay? Um, there we go. So if you recall, over. Right, so this was our, our tree height function. Right, and by cobwebbing, we saw that solutions keep growing forever and ever, right? Which makes sense because our rule is trees grow one meter each year. They can't do anything else but keep growing every year. Okay, so then we have that medication example, right? Where we have this model of the amount of drug in your system. The next day is equal to half of what you had the day before plus one. So this represents like absorption by your body, and this is like your new dose that you're taking every day. Okay, so the question is, you know, what's gonna happen to the overall level of medication in your system? Is it gonna go to some stable level? Is it gonna keep growing forever and ever? Because that might be dangerous if you have too much medicine in your system, that, that could hurt. Or does it go to zero, in which case you don't have enough medicine to do whatever you need that medicine for? Okay, so if we use our cobwebbing technique here, that guy there, okay. So now our function, our update rule is 0.5x plus one. And let's start maybe with initial condition four, okay. If we notice, blue is our update function, red is our identity, our, our, uh, our reflection line. Okay, so if I start over here, um, let's iterate. Okay, so we start here, and we're going to see, okay, this gives us about three, maybe, after one day. So then we put three in, our next day gives us 2.5, right? So we reflect over to the identity line, and then back down to our function, our update rule, right? So then our update rule says that on day two, the medication level is at 2.5. And then we use that as our input, which means we reflect it over and then see what output that gets. So we reflect it over and then back down to the blue represents us using 2.5 as our input to our update rule. And that gives us 2.25. And it can keep going, right? The next one is 2.125, 2.0625. 203, 201, 2007, right? So it's just going to keep going to this equilibrium point, which is about at exactly 2, 2. This represents kind of the equilibrium of the medication in your system, right? So if you keep taking this dose over and over again, eventually you'll have about 2 milligrams in your system every day, as long as you keep taking that 1 milligram a day. Okay? So that was starting with a pretty high initial concentration. Let's say we started with nothing, right? We start fresh, right? Let's iterate from here. Well, we're gonna go up to one, right? We're gonna take one milligram the first day. The next day we'll have half of that plus one, half of that plus one, and we're gonna keep going until we get closer and closer to two, right? So this is kind of a stable equilibrium. No matter where we start in the system, we're always gonna end up with two milligrams the medication in our system eventually after enough days, right? And the closer we start to that equilibrium concentration, the faster we'll get there. Okay, so we'll talk about you know other ways of finding uh, these equilibrium points and, and understanding the solutions of these dynamical systems in the next set of videos.